But was, yeah, you can do what you want, but you know, you let me do what I want. And then this guy started a huge IT scam, you know, a um, lot of land. He called, he named it Rajiv Gandhi IT Park and, and I, I ended up exposing it. But in between the exposure and this, and then I was thrown out of the board and then I went to the press and then finally um, he, he was asked to resign because of some other scam and, you know, all kinds of politics. But the point is, when I was uh, a member, the only messages I would get from the Infotech Corporation were virus messages. So, and these guys couldn't even send a mail. And in one particular um, incident, what happened was uh, they didn't send mail to the right uh, address. They made a spelling check to my email address. So I didn't get the invite for the board meeting and they passed some 30 crores of uh, uh, something for something. And, um, and since I was very much concerned about, you know, liabilities of a director, the next meeting I said, I don't approve this. And then he said, you are invited. I said, where is the invite? And then they showed me a printout of the mail that they sent. The, what they used to do was, even though they were an IT firm, everything that they did, they used to, you know, keep a copy in a file. Okay. And then I saw that, uh, you know, they had spelled my name wrong. And I said, you should have got a bounce on this, okay. But they never checked the bounce, okay. So that was the level of these people in the government who are running something called Infotech Corporation of Goa. So, meaning, how, how, is, how should one be surprised if the security levels are pathetic? And here I work with some banks and I can give you an example of a PSU bank where the CISO, the Chief Information Security Officer, doesn't, should be sacked left, right and center. Anything that happens, he will blame the customer. They will, and, and that's the bank which lost about two or four crores of rupees in because some people put a schema on the ATM and took all the information and then they cloned the cards and uh, and these guys have just no clue. They have outsourced all the work and they just sit there and he goes for conferences and and they, they do nothing. Whatever they do, even so-called vulnerability assessment is just done for namesake because RBI mandates it, they don't really care. The security scene is so pathetic and the data protection scene is so pathetic. I'll give you a few examples here. Recently, I changed my house. I live in a rented place, so I moved to another house. Now, it so happens that in the previous place, uh, in an apartment, I used to pay all my bills, like electricity bills, through the, through the net. So I had joined one site called visabillpay.in where you put in your RR number of the electricity bill and you get the uh, you get an electronic uh, bill which you can pay. Now when I change, I'm still getting the bills for the old house. And it's quite interesting because I came to know from the bill that the house was vacant for about three or four months because bills were like 100 rupees or something like that. Okay, Because they did not ask any other information except for RR number Okay, and now that somebody else is staying in that house, the bills have increased, okay. Now, imagine somebody, maybe a real estate guy, just goes around, picks up all the RR numbers and puts in there. He can get a full details of which house is vacant all over, all over Bangalore, okay. And if you go and complain about this to whatever, they don't really bother because they say, hey, what's the big deal, nothing will happen. Okay. And that, that brings me to this other topic of UID. Actually, I am a graduate of IIT Bombay and, you know, Nandan is also an IIT Bombay alumni. And we have an IIT Bombay alumni association where we have all these uh, discussions about UID and all that. So in 2009 or 2010, um, UID people came to you know our alumni association and explained about the pro the project and all that stuff. Okay. So since then I have I have been in touch with uh, all these UID people, and in the beginning I, I myself had thought that it was a great idea, but then as I read about biometric 
I found that this is uh, um, this is this is not going to work because it is so easy to fake a fingerprint, for instance. And there are uh, you know there are videos on YouTube where fingerprints can be faked. In fact, it's it's very easy to to do that, and there's a lot of people in India who will show you how to do that. And when I went and, you know, this is just one of the small small issues, but there are huge number of issues. For instance, now because of UID, you will have like a, a, a millions of people having, having bank accounts where they will probably get 100 rupees a month in their bank account. Now, in all this hacking, what happens is there is something called mule account. The, the biggest problem with the banking infrastructure is that um, from a hacker's point of view is that if he transfers the money to some other account, the trace is left. That is, if, if he transfers it to his own account, then even though he can get the money, he can be caught later because you know he has transferred the money to his own account. So uh, what usually hackers do is, uh, you know, they, they buy accounts from people who don't use their accounts. So for instance, a, a laborer in India who doesn't use his UID account, pay him like, 2,000 bucks, and he'll be very happy to give his, uh, you know, ATM card, his his everything. Anyway, if he doesn't use the account, or he has got like 100 bucks in the account, okay. So a hacker can then transfer the money to his account, and then he can remove the money from his account. And even if he's caught, he says, I didn't do it. Somebody paid me so much money, and what you can do to him, you know, even so, you are not really catching the whole criminal. And in fact, one such case has already happened. A Chinese national who came to Bombay and uh, stayed in a hotel actually and he in fact used the hotel address to get himself a SIM card you know transferred a couple of crores from some bank to 10 or 15 different accounts and all over India and they, they turned out to be UID mule accounts that is they were accounts made due to uh, UID, uh, that is the, they were accounts made uh, by giving UID as the identity and for meant for cash transfers. So now this aspect of security was never thought of, not just thought of, but when such aspects were mentioned to Nandan and his team,